This is a study on the Abrahamic Covenant. Um, and the Abrahamic Covenant, uh, the scriptures that cover the provisions of that covenant are in um, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 7. <clears throat> In Genesis chapter 13 verses 14 through 17 so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a moment here just to uh, have you pause the tape and open up your Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 12 and read verses 1 2 and 3 and then Genesis 12 verse 7 and then Genesis 13 verses 14 through 17. Okay, so the uh, there are two other passages um, that also include the provisions of this Abrahamic covenant, and um, that would be Genesis chapter 15 verses 1 through 21. In Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 through 21. Uh, I'm not going to quote any of those scriptures in um, uh, in this study <clears throat> because of the length of them, but at any moment you can just push pause on the bottom left button of this video and read those verses. And I'll have all of those verses listed below in the uh, description of this of this tape or this email. So the emphasis in Genesis chapter 15, um, you have Abraham would be the father of one nation in particular, and uh, secondly, he would be the father of many nations in general. And third, God signs and seals the Abrahamic covenant and spells out the exact borders of the Abrahamic Covenant as extending from the uh, river of Egypt uh, in the south to the great river Euphrates of the north and the signing was done in such a way that it rendered the covenant unconditional. The emphasis in Genesis chapter 17 is uh, uh, on the token of the covenant, physical circumcision on the eighth day um, now we know that one of the reasons for that was uh, to to be unique because circumcision was not unique during that period of time with all male, uh, no, whether they were Jew or Gentile, but the eighth day was unique to uh, to this covenant and to Judaism. Also, we know that on the eighth day, that uh, according to physiology, um, our bodies are able to begin to clot normally uh, by the time you reach eight days old. So there was something interesting with that. Um, so the participants in this covenant, uh, of course, would be Abraham and God. And Abraham stood as the representative, uh, the head of the entire Jewish nation not for all humanity. And um, there's a list of provisions, and um, there are 14 of them, actually, that are important to mention in this study. Um, first is that a great nation was to come out of Abraham, namely the nation of Israel. Secondly, he was pro uh, promised a land, specifically the land of Canaan. Now, there will be a separate uh, videotaping on the land covenant, also known as the Palestinian covenant, uh, having to do with land specific, uh, that will be in a different uh, study. Uh, the third provision of this Abrahamic covenant was that Abraham himself was to be greatly blessed. Also, uh, Abraham's name would be great. Abraham will be a blessing to others. 
those who bless Israel would be blessed, and those who curse Israel will be cursed. Now that has some important uh, ramifications in modern days, uh, which we will discuss in some of the future studies. Um, the eighth provision is that in Abraham, all will ultimately be blessed. Nine would be Abraham would receive a son through his wife, Sarah. And 10, his descendants would undergo Egyptian bondage. 11, other nations as well as Israel would come forth from Abraham. And that would be the Arab nation, uh, Arab states, and some of these nations. Of course, we know that came through uh, Ishmael, um, the son that Abraham had, um, that was a decision that a man made decision that he and Sarah made uh, with, uh, with his maid servant. Uh, the twelfth provision was that his name was to be changed from Abram. In, in uh, Hebrew, it would be pronounced Avram. A and B in, uh, in Hebrew are the same letters. Uh, uh, Avram or Abram. Uh, to Abraham or Avraham in Hebrew. Um, Abram means exalted father, and Avraham or Abraham means a father of a multitude. Um, 13, the 13th provision is that Sari's name would be changed to Sarah. Uh, Sari means my princess. And Sarah means the princess. Interesting uh, that um, Avram or Abram uh, to Abraham, they added the H or the, uh, the H letter. Sari to Sarah, the H letter. Uh, that's the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And uh, the number five. Uh, has some uh, uh, some significance if you study numerology of the Bible. It'd be interesting to look that up and see what that's all about. The letter H, uh, the number five in uh, uh, numerology. The fourteenth and the final provision of the Abrahamic covenant was circumcision was to be a token of the covenant. Thus, according to the Abrahamic covenant, circumcision was to be a sign of one's uh, Jewishness. And um, these provisions of the Abrahamic covenant can be categorized um, in three areas. One area would be Abraham, to Abraham. The other would be to the seed, uh, which is Israel, the seed of Abraham, Israel. And then the other could be to the Gentiles. So, uh, the provision being categorized to Abraham, uh, again, Abraham was to be the father of a great nation, Israel, and he was to possess all of the promised land. Other nations, including the Arab states, were ultimately to descend from Abraham. Many of the descendants would become kings, both Jewish and non-Jewish kings. <clears throat> and Abraham was to receive personal blessings Abraham was to be the blessing to others, and his name was to become great. And so it is among Jews, Muslims, and Christians. The second categorization of these provisions to the seed or to, to Israel is that the nation of Israel was to become great. It was ultimately to become innumerable. Uh, it was to possess all the land, uh, the promised land. It was to receive victory over its enemies, and we see that all throughout Scripture. Um, and uh, as we know, even though there's a lot of enemies today in Israel, uh, against Israel, I should say, Israel still is a nation, and um, um, they, are, they main, maintain their victorious position. The fact that the promises were made to both Abraham and to the seed shows that these blessings have not yet be, uh, received complete fulfillment, but we, uh, we will await the messianic kingdom for that. 
And the third is um, the categorization of, of the provisions to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles would be blessed for blessing Israel, and they would be cursed for cursing Israel. Also, they are to receive spiritual blessings, but ultimately, they were to become, uh, through one specific seed of Abraham, who would be referred to as the Messiah, the one who saves. Uh, so the Abrahamic covenant contains both physical and spiritual promises, while the physical blessings were limited only uh, to the Jews, the spiritual blessings were to extend to the entire world, to the Gentiles, but only through the Messiah. So the basis for development um, of, of um, other covenants, reducing the Abrahamic covenant to its very basics, it can be seen that it contained three aspects. One would be the land aspect. One would be the seed aspect. That's the seed that uh, for the Messiah to come. And then one would be the, um, the, the aspect of blessings. The land aspect is developed in the land covenant, which is also referred to as the, um, as the uh, Palestinian covenant. And we'll, as I said, we'll go over that in a different taping. And the seed aspect is covered in the Davidic covenant, the covenant made with David, David, Melech Yisrael, David, the king of Israel. The blessing aspect is presented in the new covenant. The new covenant is very important to read and understand so that you can uh, actually see where it was um, written that uh, the the um, fulfilling of um, prophecies that were uh, prophesied in the Old Testament, they come to fruition and are revealed in the New Testament. So the confirmation of this covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, the covenant confirmation is through Isaac. Abraham had eight sons by three different women, and the question arose, through which son would the Abrahamic covenant be confirmed? God revealed that it was to be through, the, through Sarah's son, Isaac. And God's appearance to Isaac is recorded in Genesis chapter 26, verses 2 through 5. And uh, again, you can either stop this tape and read that and continue on by pressing play again, or you can come back to it later. Genesis 26 verses 2 through 5. And the covenant was later reconfirmed to Isaac in Genesis 26, verse 24. Genesis 26, 24. Confirmation through Jacob. Isaac's, uh, Isaac had two sons, and God chose to confirm the covenant with Jacob as seen in Genesis chapter 28, verses 13, 14, and 15. <clears throat> and then we have confirmation through the sons of Jacob. So we have 12 sons. So it's, uh, if you read Genesis chapter 49, we know that Jacob had 12 sons, and those 12 sons were to be the fa uh, to father, if you will, the 12 tribes of Israel. So what is the status of the Abrahamic covenant now? The Abrahamic covenant became the basis for dispensation of promise. Because the Abrahamic covenant is unconditional, it is still very much in effect, even though it has remained largely unfulfilled. The ultimate fulfillment <clears throat> will come during the kingdom age. And some examples of this include uh, Exodus uh, chapter 2, verses 23 to 25, Exodus 4, verses 24 to 26, Exodus 6, verses 2 through 8, and Exodus 32, verses 11 through 14. Also in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 46, Deuteronomy 34, 4, 2 Kings 13, 
verses 22 and 23, First Chronicles 16, verses 15 through 19, Second Chronicles 20, verses 7 through 8, Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 7 and 8, Psalms 105, verse 7 through 12, and in the New Testament, Luke chapter 1, verses 54 and 55, also Luke chapter 1, verses 68 to 73, Galatians 3, verses 15 through 18, and Hebrews 6, 13 through 20. And again, I'll list those uh, in the media below that's listed underneath this video. These verses note that the Abrahamic covenant was the basis for the Exodus, for giving them the land, for Jewish survival in spite of the Jews' disobedience, and for the coming of the Messiah, for the resurrection of the dead, and for Israel's final redemption and restoration. The Abrahamic Covenant is a gr good example of what was started earlier, the, that a covenant could be signed and sealed at a specific point in time, and not every provision goes immediately into effect, but rather three different things happen. Some went into effect right away, such as the change of the names and the circumcision, some went into effect in the near future, for there was a 25-year wait until the birth of Isaac, and a 400-year wait before the conquest of the land, and some provisions go into effect in the prophetic distance, uh, the distant future, uh, such as the settlement of all the promised land, which has not yet been fulfilled to this day. That's a review of the Abrahamic covenant, and again, the verses will be listed below in the media. Thank you.